Chapter 1. Despite developments in how women are treated today, they still get sidelined in many ways. In the United States and other parts of the world, women are slowly and steadily taking over jobs and fields previously dominated by men. Women have evolved from being homemakers to taking top positions in the corporate world. It is no longer surprising to see a woman occupying a seat on the board, just as it has become quite the norm to have a woman on a congressional seat. While there are still some parts of the world where women are treated as toys, slaves, and property, America is centuries ahead of such a biased misplacement of the female gender. Women need to rise up. There is a call for everyone to wake up and command more respect in society. However, men still rule the world, and the working world is still a tough place for women. Women are being sidelined in their places of work. With all the growth the world has experienced, there are still some companies that pay women less than their male counterparts. In addition, women occupy only a tiny percentage of the board seats, and men still dominate Congress. Aside from these external barriers, women are hindered by obstacles such as lack of self-confidence, aspirations, and the expectation to have the best that life can offer. As a result, women tend to pull back instead of leaning in. In this summary, women will learn how to climb up the career ladder and pursue their ambitions to give expression to their full potential. Also, it will help men to understand the world of women and play their role adequately to promote equality. In places like Afghanistan and Sudan, girls receive little to no education. Wives are treated as the property of their husbands, and women who are raped are routinely cast out of their homes for disgracing their families. Cheryl Sandberg Chapter 2. Chart a course that reflects your personal and professional success and not societal opinions. Women have everything it takes to assume leadership positions in the workplace. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, girls in the United States perform better than boys in the classroom, earning around 57% and 60% of undergraduate and master's degrees, respectively. Despite this, the workplace demands risk-taking and advocacy, a trait most girls do not possess. This may be the major reason girls' academic achievements do not automatically translate to higher positions in an organization. One of the main reasons for this is a leadership ambition gap. Although many women are ambitious and they desire to be at the peak of their careers, statistics have shown that more men aspire to the most senior jobs in most companies. McKinsey surveyed 4,000 employees of successful companies in 2012. The survey showed that 36% of the male participants wanted to be executive-level managers in their companies compared to 18% of the women surveyed. Women need to start going for higher-level jobs because they have what it takes to succeed in those roles. More men aim for leadership roles than women, and this mindset even starts before entering into the company's four walls. American author Samantha Edis and her husband were going through their daughter's yearbook and got to where the children were asked what they wanted to be in the future. Most of the boys indicated that they wanted to become presidents, but none of the girls said anything like that. Men are often celebrated when they show ambitious and powerful traits, but when women display the same traits, they are criticized. Women are forced to believe that since men hold most leadership positions, they shouldn't even bother to compete for any. There is also the stereotype that a career woman is not attractive. Most cultures have portrayed that a working-class woman tends to be so ambitious that she does not have a personal life. 
Fear is the root cause of most of the challenges women face in the workplace. So without these fears, women could climb higher to positions on the career ladder. Without fear, women can pursue professional success and personal fulfillment and freely choose one or the other or both. Sheryl Sandberg Chapter 3. Internal factors play a major role in the reason why most women are having issues at the workplace. Sheryl Sandberg once hosted a meeting at Facebook several years ago. Fifteen executives from Silicon Valley were invited, and Timothy Geithner, former U.S. Secretary of Treasury, came with four of his staff members. Sheryl Sandberg asked the guests, which were mostly men, to help themselves with the buffet. The men took their food first and sat at the large tables, while the women took their food last and sat away from the large tables. Sheryl Sandberg invited the women to the large tables, but they refused. The women were formally invited to the meeting, but they appeared like spectators because of where they were seated. At this point, Sheryl Sandberg realized that aside from the external barriers that women face, they also face many internal battles. Many women prefer to withdraw and observe things from the background, which is why they don't succeed in the workplace as much as men do. Insecurity is a major problem some women need to deal with if they want to excel in life. Most women tend to underestimate themselves. Several studies have revealed that women are always quick to see their performance in the workplace as worse than it actually is. At the same time, men see theirs as better than it actually is. Men attribute their success to internal factors, while women attribute theirs to external factors. Also, when it comes to explaining failures, men look outward while women look inward. People and the media have a way of attributing women's success to external factors. For example, when Facebook wanted to go public, the New York Times wrote an article that said that Sheryl Sandberg's success was because she was lucky and had powerful mentors helping her. The statement was obviously not wrong, but the success wasn't attributed to her own abilities first. The external factors came first. But I also know that in order to continue to grow and challenge myself, I have to believe in my own abilities. I still face situations that I fear are beyond my capabilities. Cheryl Sandberg Chapter 4. People tend to evaluate others based on gender, so a good act can be seen as bad just because you are a woman. Frank Flynn and Cameron Anderson, who were professors at Columbia Business School and New York University, respectively, researched in 2003 about the perception of people in the workplace. They used entrepreneur Heidi Reutzen as their case study. Flynn and Anderson divided their participants into two groups. One group was asked to read Heidi Reutzen's story, and they gave the other group the same story, but Heidi's name was changed to Howard. Don't be under pressure to downplay your potential because you want to be accepted in the workplace. Afterward, professors Flynn and Anderson asked the participants about their impressions of Heidi or Howard. The students viewed Heidi and Howard as competent entrepreneurs, yet while the participants had great respect for both Heidi and Howard, Howard appeared more attractive to them. On the other hand, Heidi was seen as selfish and someone they did not want to work for or hire. The data was the same, but because the gender differed, it created different impressions. 
This reveals that when a man is successful, everyone likes him. However, when a woman is successful, men and women criticize her. When women excel professionally, they are regarded negatively. For instance, Margaret Thatcher was described as Attila the Hen. Ni Nehru, India's first female prime minister, was called the Old Witch. When a woman becomes competent in the workplace and focuses on excellence rather than being men-pleasers, she is categorized as acting like a man and people tend to dislike her. Gender stereotypes even make some women do more work with no reward. Women need to stop desiring to be liked by everyone because this is one of the major reasons why a lot of women are held back. If women must change things in any area of life, they need to realize they can't please everyone. Did you know? According to UN Women Research in 2021, women serve as head of states in 22 countries and 119 countries have never had a female leader. Chapter 5. Don't go about chasing after strangers to mentor you. Let your talents speak for you. When Sheryl Sandberg goes to conferences, most of the women in the audience always want her to be their mentor. In 2011, Nitin Noria, the dean of Harvard Business School, invited Sandberg for an interview at the school. When it was time for Q&A, the men in the building asked, Thoughtful questions like, what lessons from your previous work are you applying at Facebook? How do you ensure stability for your developers? A woman got up and asked her, how can I get a mentor? Sheryl Sandberg felt embarrassed. When meeting with a mentor, go prepared and don't waste their time. The men wanted answers on how to manage a business while the women were looking for help. Women have been taught that with the right mentor, they can climb the career ladder easily. So women are always asked to go get someone to teach them everything. What they don't know is that they are learning how to be dependent on others. This is not to say mentorship is not important, but this is not something you actively seek out. There ought to be a connection between both parties. Studies have shown that it is the performance and skills of protégés that attract mentors to them. We need to stop telling people to go get a mentor so they can excel. Rather, we should tell them to excel, then they will get a mentor. Approaching a complete stranger to be your mentor might hardly work, but approaching the same person with an intelligent question will always yield results. Ideally, mentorship should benefit both the mentor and the mentee. The mentor will provide assistance to the mentee, and the mentor will benefit from the relationship by receiving useful information and a sense of purpose. Don't go to your mentor complaining. Instead, focus on giving them a problem to solve. You should also try not to see asking for help from a mentor as a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. Aside from being mentored by senior people, peers can also mentor each other to help achieve goals. Chapter 6. Constructive Feedback Helps Companies to Identify Solutions on Areas of Weakness One negative behavior that is rampant in the workplace is dishonesty. Sometimes people prefer to shy away from honesty to protect themselves and those around them. People in lower positions find it difficult to state the truth, perhaps because they are afraid of being fired. For women, being truthful in the workplace comes with many fears. They are usually afraid of being called nags or not being called team players. 
It's okay to speak truthfully, but don't attack the personality of others. Use simple language to communicate with. For instance, a Chinese woman was talking to Mark Zuckerberg about her manager. To understand what the woman was saying, Zuckerberg asked her to simplify her words. She spoke again, but Zuckerberg still didn't understand and asked her to simplify further. Finally, the lady got angry and shouted that her manager is bad. Although she was speaking Chinese, Mark Zuckerberg understood what she was saying. So, being truthful may cause a drastic improvement in a company. If you are someone that welcomes feedback, you will end up becoming a better person. Knowing that there's a problem is the first step to solving any issue. Asking for feedback from people makes you know how others view your attitudes and actions. When you ask others to evaluate you and not assume, then you can work on your flaws. You need to be open to feedback and always ask people to tell you areas you need to improve on. That's the only way to get better at whatever you do. Sometimes the truth can hurt, but it's always beneficial. Asking for feedback and speaking about your shortcomings in public can also help build meaningful relationships. When people honestly tell you the truth, appreciating them in front of others encourages them. You can also use humor while providing feedback. Another way to build a good relationship is to share emotions and encourage freedom in the workplace. Be free to cry, and maybe the things that disqualify women will become a norm in the nearest future. Conclusion. Equality in the workplace can only be achieved if more women go for higher positions in every sector. But women should never put themselves in the position where they have to choose between their work and their homes. We can help each other by encouraging every woman to go for leadership positions with confidence and tenacity. Employers, colleagues, and spouses need to be supportive of women. For instance, men can do their best to support women by showing them respect and treating them equally. If women can come together to help each other, we can all become stronger. It's time for women to set big goals, overcome all hurdles, and achieve their potential because if we have more women in leadership positions, women will be treated fairly in the workplace. Women should let go of internal barriers that can hinder them from pursuing positions of power. Let go of self-doubt that makes you think you're not good enough. And start speaking up at the workplace. No more taking the backstage. Having mentors is a great idea, but it is not advisable to be overly dependent on them. It is okay to seek professional advice when faced with difficult situations. Also, asking for help from your spouse is nothing to be ashamed of. When women assume positions of power, they tend to put policies in place that are favorable to all. It would be beautiful to have a world where every woman can reach the peak of their career without internal or external obstacles. It's time to be comfortable around women who have professional ambitions and stop criticizing them and calling them negative names. Try this. Freely meditate on what position in your workplace you want to attain. Then, if there are areas you need to improve to qualify for the position, go get more training.